All right, well, this is something you're not going to see very often. I am doing the hardest to mark of my life. This is the T100 LT, and my god, I... <laughs> This tank is um, both amazing and terrible at the same time. Skill 4 Lithuania, I did a live stream with him, basically convinced me to try this tank again, and I've brought the Mark of Excellence up with 6 games to 84.82%. So we've got 0.18% left on the Mark of Excellence. It's such a hit and miss tank, literally. The accuracy is like 0.4, yeah, it's 0.42 accuracy. Fucking incredible. Let's give this thing a try. Hopefully we can get the two mark. I'm really nervous and excited. Before we get into the video, I want to thank Ridge for sponsoring it. The other day, RidgeWallet.com reached out to me and they basically paid me to mention that the size of someone's wallet is inversely proportionate to the size of their dick. So if you've got a big dick, check out RidgeWallet.com. They give a bunch of different wallets. These are about the size of a credit card. And I actually use mine every day and I have for the past couple months. So I really recommend this product. I've used it for a while. I'm very happy to have them on my channel. And if you want to check them out, link will be in the description. Incredible. Can you believe that Ridge let me actually use that advertisement? Fucking insane. <laughs> All right, what we're going to do for this one is I have to do well. So on a map like Abbey, if you're actually trying to do well in like from a Mark of Excellence perspective, you'd want to try to get as much spotting as you can on most maps in the game. Now, the thing is, this is Abbey. So the scouting options are fucking limited. Basically, the only people you could scout if you wanted to are back here and your team has to win the middle of the map for that. They've got how many fucking like they have way too many mediums. It's not going to happen. And already I'm not going to play that side of the map at all, because I'll just get already. Now, what I can do instead is I can play the 2-line or the 9-line. Now, personally, I'd rather- this already is so annoying. Okay, hopefully that's better. Now, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go to the 2-line. Now, the reason for that is, actually, in this matchmaking, with all these mediums, I could justify going to the 9-line. I'm comfortable on the 2-line, so we're going to start there. And what you'd expect, if you're one of the players who has trouble with Abby, you'd expect them to kind of just put their heavies on this side of the map. Some mediums, like especially the brawly mediums, like the Object 430, T55A, T54, they'll be over here too, and so you can kind of expect the typical heavy tank medium tanks to be over here. Now, because you can see most of their mediums who are brawly are going to the mid, I'm fairly, I wouldn't, well, where's their Skoda, right? Because I might get caught out by the Skoda for making this play. Just looking for shots, put one in, and their Skoda is going to be here, I'm sure of it. If their Skoda's not lit, their Skodas are lit, so I can stay here. So basically what I was doing there is I was watching to see who went to the mid, and if it was the Skodas, there's no way I'm sticking around because their best position apart from the mid is right here, shooting into me. So this position should be good enough. We don't really have shots in them, not that big of a deal. And if you take this bush like this, you shouldn't really expect to be lit unless there's tanks here. Now, if you see this 268 version four, he's falling back. And so what that means with this guy falling back is that I'm probably not gonna get spotted. Like, there's probably very few of the enemy team players over here, cause he's running away, right? So here we are, can look for a better angle on the Skoda. I can push in if the 2684 on our team is pushing up. See if we can pop one into the ass of this leopard very quickly. Yeah, we do. Get that in. Now, right here, you have to watch out for... No, you don't have to watch out. Mainly, Artie would be the big threat here. I can put shots underneath this 268 version 4, and sometimes you can actually do that if you play sort of to the left right here. The reason I'm on the left right now is mainly because of Artie, so you wouldn't really want to be playing here, because people like this 268 version 4 would expect to get clicked by people over kind of down here on the minimap. That's a very common Artie position. Now, from here, I shouldn't be pushing into this. They're all camping. They're ready for it. I don't have any armor. My best place to focus on the mid of the map, and really, from an angle like this, I should be able to get really awkward shots onto this T44, and maybe T54, and maybe put him into a cross or if he doesn't play. okay he's safe all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the location try to change the angle the 55a up here on the map didn't get spotted which is good to know and here is where i'm gonna sit trying to look for shots now dude shut up i know <laughs> i absolutely know i'm aware of it but whatever okay so no one's here are we winning this side of the map so there's a lot going on this guy got hit for 332. We're winning this fight. It's gonna take a while because what's happening is this 60 TP here, if you're ever defending the one two line on this map, just sit where the 60 TP is and don't die. Like, just sit there, man. You'll always do very well in that situation. That's what this guy's doing. So hopefully we win this side of the map. It's a three versus three now. It used to be a five V three. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Fosh is a one shot. So I think we might actually lose this side of the map and well, how do I deal with that when that happens? So I need to deal with this? Not really. I care about the EBR killing the Artie. That's really about it. Because we want the Artie. Like, normally you wouldn't... I normally don't care about really protecting Artie, but in this case, we need the three Artie to be alive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop up like this. I need to make sure they haven't really pushed up the nine line. And then we're going to try to counter 
this EBR and prevent it. There's a fucking Progetto who's unspotted. That's gonna lower my mark of excellence quite a bit. Okay. The Arty, that Progetto did amazing. Okay. Incredible. Oh boy. All right, so that absolutely wrecked my Mark of Excellence. What I'm going to do for this one is try not to let that bother me. I noticed they have three Arty and we're top tier, so every single tank on their team, apart from really their T95 and their TS5 and their 257, I can deal with. Like, all those tanks there, I'd say the 257 is the biggest challenge for me to fight. Well, and their tier 10s in a one-on-one -on -one situation. So what I want to start by doing, really, is taking advantage of the fact that we have three Arty and spotting down the one line. Because I'm a T100 light tank, I can totally get into the bush at C1 and take advantage of it. Now, one of the things you have to know about C1, if you're going to go here, is players on the north side of the map, if you're on this spawn, you, you can't expect support from tankers. You can expect support from Arty, but you're not, you can't expect people like this P44, the Progetto, to follow you, because what's going to happen is most players on this map stop right here for better or for worse. I think it's a really shitty decision. I think if you want to win on this map, you do want to control C1. But regardless, you shouldn't expect your top tier mediums to support you in this type of situation. So if you're going to go up to where I'm going, expect them to leave. Watch them. Look, like, see this shit? Leopard 1, right there. I think that's a terrible play. I've never tried it, so I don't really know. So EBR is right in front of me. He fired. I'm totally going to push into that and try to see what I can find. So I'm just going to sit up here and I'm going to spot people like that M4A1 rev. Maybe a bit more, spot the M4, put a shot in his direction, get the track. And so here is where you need to make sure you've got support coming. You can see our art, there already wrecked the Progetto. And this is, I'm trying to get already spotting damage right here. And you can see none of that's happened. So we've up to 242 spotting damage, can't really do anything about it. Because we've got a type here, I can kind of make it work, but I need to be really... This is so stupid, like, why isn't... Okay, so we don't have already... All right, so we don't have Arty support. I'm down 400 HP. Arty just started to shoot here. That's really unfortunate. I even pinged it, but whatever. What I'm going to do from here is kind of join this Leopard in the mid. I don't think there's a lot of aggressive plays that I can get away with. I'm down a Fire Extinguisher. So in a tank like this, you can expect to get lit on fire frequently. You don't really want to take engage engagements if you don't have that Fire Extinguisher. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to kind of fall back to here. And because this Leopard is pushing up, I can take advantage of the people he spots. There's no one over here that I've shots on basically people are going to get lit on these rocks if the leopard starts spotting so shoots the m4 rev that's exactly what you can expect now they're pushing in from this side that's an issue i just noticed that so what i'm going to do is because this t10 has fallen back i can take a position up here and support the t10 for them to kill this t10 they're gonna you're gonna see this this is exactly what you want to do if you're loot bruh <laughs> fuck this is exactly what you want to do if you're losing the, the eastern side of this map. So come up to a position like this, and a lot of players who are playing Russian tanks have an issue with the gun depression on this flank. So what you can do is you can just, instead of playing to my right, sit where I am, and you can see no issues with the gun depression at all. And as they come around this corner on the T10, the T10 is going to be lighting them, and I'm going to have shots. So 54 is doing whatever the hell he's doing. I have no idea, man. Spot the 257. I think it's a good idea to light these guys, because I will get the assist from our arty. With the 54 up here, it's going to be hard. Is he just YOLOing? Dude, that's a really good play from the enemy T-54. I can't shoot the enemy T-54 because of what the 257 is doing. So what I have to do here is I have to wait for that 257 to fire. And then I'm going to shoot at people like this T-54 if I can. Because I can actually pen him. So, put shots into the T-54. This is just basic. My god. <laughs> that camo. Okay. And we're down to 400... 543 HE, HP. Okay, so how do I make this work? I need damage, and this game's almost over. So I think what I want to do is I'll just kind of fall back to here. I think that's a good, decent place. So I'm trying to get damage out of this, right? The enemies are going to push into our base, and I want to maybe be spotting for our arties who aren't useful at all. Um, this guy's going to die, so he might get the spawning damage, which will be frustrating. There's nothing I can do about it. it sounds like they're... Is this guy just suddenly in the game? Incredible. Okay, so what are we going to do? T-54 spotted. I hope he dies. Looks like he's having gun depression issues. Why isn't already killing him? 22 spotting damage. Fantastic. We'll go from here. Try to go for his commander's hatch. So I'm watching the map to see if anyone else is spotted. Kind of over here because I have no idea. 54 is looking away. Try to get the kill shot on him. That one doesn't go in. 
And there's a 257. So 57 might put a snapshot into me. There's nothing I can do about it. Here's where I'm going to hope for a lot of spotting damage on these players. So put a shot to the 57. And maybe we can flank these guys in a sec. So, dude, we're going to cap out. Fuck. <laughs> Why am I not getting spotting damage? AP from the 95. Hello? We have three fucking arty. <laughs> I'm a one shot to these players anyways, so it's not the end of the world. Now I'm in a position to maybe continue to spot these guys. Try to put a shot into that guy, it doesn't really work. Here's where I might have to drive in front of the 95. Unfortunately, the 95 clearly sees me. If he fired, so now I can get behind him. Where is. <laughs> Dude, there's no help. Okay. CGC hit me instead. Fuck. I get behind this guy so he can't do damage to me. <laughs> what the hell is this game? On to the next. Okay, now we're on a map where you could actually expect to get a bunch of spawning damage and not a lot of damage as a light tank driver. So if you're trying to go for damage, like let's just say you're only a win eight player, what you'd have to do on this map is you'd have to go to the city. Now, imagine going to the city with 220 pen, you know, against 705A's, E100, and so on. It's a bad place. So what I'm going to do instead is there's a bush right here. And I think on a map like this, what you want to do, like people are way too aggressive with their scouting. What you want to do is you want to treat it like damage with, you know, an average damaging tank, like let's say it's an M48 Patton, you can get away with shooting once every like 30 seconds on average. You know, really, you do, you're generally going to get like two shots over the course of 10 seconds, not shoot anything for a minute. I think you should approach sc scouting the exact same way. You don't need to try to get 10k spotting right off the bat. What you want to do is you want to try to get like 300 spotting damage here and there and expect it to add up over maybe 10 instances or so. So what I'm going to do is we're going to sit in this bush. This EBR is going to YOLO scout the field. He's going to steal all my eyes. I don't have a problem with that. He's He's gonna die eventually. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully I don't die because of that knocked over tree. It's very common if you accidentally knock over a tree in this bush, people will kill you simply because, you know, it's easy to blind fire this bush. It's the only popular bush. So, potato spotted. We'll just see if the spotting damage racks up. Okay, what I'm gonna do, and this is against most people's scouting advices, but I'm just gonna fall back, make this bush solid, and shoot at the progetto. The reason for that is the progetto's a threat, and no one's shooting at him, so I got spotted. Probably a bad play, honestly. I feel like the Progetto is a major threat and we want him out of the fight, but definitely not worth it. So I'm going to fall back, and this might actually work out, because I did knock over the tree in the bush, and the enemy team will see me running away. So what I can do is I can return to this bush, and I don't really expect to get blindfired, because they saw me running away. So it's very, you know, if someone saw this tree knocked over, hopefully they'd assume I ran away. Now here, I'm going to turn my tank around just in case I you know, get pushed because the CBR is almost dead and I hope that's good enough. Okay, so the problem with the field is right now, if I spot anyone in here, I'm not spotting, no one's going to shoot who I light. We have one already, he's not aiming in the field and I don't really, well, look at the map. It's like, it's not going to happen. So what I want to do is I want to start pushing the field to try to get damage. I'm okay spotting that 13105 and hopefully he dies to a clicker or something. Really, this bush is the only thing I can do because there's no progetto over here. I have to let this one, well, this guy has to die. His camping is really helping his team out, so we ideally need to get him killed. Okay, if I were this guy, I'd probably be reloading about now, so... Okay, he's almost certainly not reloading. One. If I keep moving, he might miss, which would be kind of funny. Dude, there's an STB-1 back there. <laughs> so I'm hoping the EBR in the back can land a shot. This guy's looking at me, so I'm not going to trust me to be able to shoot him and then fall back based on the reaction times. If he pokes again, that'll be nice. No one can do anything about this guy based on his position, which is really frustrating, but whatever. I mean, I might take this shot if he just sits there. Yeah, get the kill. Okay, so that's a high roll. We needed that. What I'm going to do from here is I'm not spotted by the looks of it. He might have lost his commander or something. We need to spot that STB-1. That's going to really help out my game and my mark of excellence. And then also, once the STB-1 and STRV die, We'll be in a great position to actually help out. So there's a bush here. I'm going to go for it. Just try to spot this guy. He might have moved, I guess. No, the fucking EBR, man. <laughs> okay, I don't think the STB is there. I think he must have moved. So there's the arty. Probably shouldn't shoot, to be honest. 
Okay, he dies. That's spawning damage. Good. Yeah, so there's no way that SCP-1 is still here. He would have been lit. And so he's probably at the back of the map right here, sniping into the sides of these players. So that's exactly what we're going to look for. I'm going to pop up here. Found the SCP-1. Hopefully we get 2k spotting. And I'm going to trust the fact that he has shitty gun handling to save me here. Okay, hopefully that guy dies. Get the shot. He's looking away. There's no RD to really worry about. Hopefully people can kill him. Jesus. Okay, we've got the EBR supporting us. This guy's clearly a mile. <laughs> okay. Not happening, buddy. Fuck off. <laughs> Is the EBR gonna land a shot? Come on, man. Okay, got him. Perfect. STRV's gotta be next. Why is this game so fucking hard? There's still a full HP Progetto left. It's an STRV. Bounces off of him, of course. I just want to light that Progetto. Okay, so that was a harder game, but hey, we did 2k and 2k, so I'd say that's a really decent result, <laughs> all things considering. Hopefully the games pick up from here. Oh boy, Lakeville. Okay, so this map has a lot of potential for scouting. Where do the scouts sit, though? They always go into these rocks here. One of these two. Now, I don't know which one exactly light tank sit. Like, I'm not a light tank main. I'm not a scouter. Let me put it that way. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to play the high risk, high reward game. And I'm going to start off by sitting in, I think, this bush right here. Because I want to try to spot TDs back there. And hopefully we can get damage by doing... Oh, hey. Okay, so that's the plan. A lot of people will sit back here. The problem with, so if you're trying to scout on this map and you're actually doing it to try to win the game, often what you'll find is that if you lose the city, getting out of H6, like any of these bushes along this road, are really challenging because what happens is you just, you can't, it's open field. To cross right here always gets you killed. So we're going to rely on the camo to get into this position. And if we have to leave, we're going to rely on the camo there too. And I'm just going to sit in this bush. Hopefully it's the right one main thing is not to knock over the tree and i'm okay being really patient to avoid knocking over shit so here we are Let's see how it goes all right so 13105 is pushing i'm gonna block this fucking retarded 704 oh this guy we're not gonna get any spotting damage on him i expect it's gonna be everyone else the bat chat's probably gonna die and so what will happen is if this this bat chat dies i actually kind of need that to happen to increase my mark of excellence because i want to be spotting these lights in the mid so you can see we're kind of up to 400 spotting damage already and this guy might be, we're not spotting him for sure, but if the RU pokes, we'll get the spotting, and this is the problem. So with this position, with the enemy RU here, if I get lit, look, we, we're giving up the city right now, so this is a really tough position to be in. I'm actually going to want to leave the second this RU gets, like, he's, I'm going to wait till he dies, but basically once he dies, I'm going to leave, because look, like, we've got an ST1 is our only player going city, they're going to have a, probably an E100 go city, and that's going to be the end of, you know, our city fight, so it's going to be tough. Okay, so with this 140 pushing, I'm interested to see if he dies making that play. You can see they've sent in this E100 sniping the mid, so 140 might take a hit, and this guy is going to get out of here. So what I, like the RU is going to have to fall back. So what I want to do is not shoot the RU. The, I'm not getting the swatting him anyways, doesn't really matter. And this is where I'm going to leave, because I think we're going to lose the city. You can see based on the ST1, like he has no chance. <laughs> I will die if I stay there. This guy is going to die. Mark my words if we lose the city. So here's the strat. If we encounter the E100, we'll pull what we did on the STB1. Now, I don't think the E100 is going to push in. They're probably busy sniping the mid. And so I'm going to check just in case nothing's broken here. And I'm going to look around to try to see if I see anything broken here. No. Oh, fuck, dude. <laughs> okay. He's reloading. Let's see what we can do. I thought that even 100 was sniping us. Very lucky that he isn't. You can see he's going to engage me instead. So I'm on the wide flank. I can flank this guy if he looks away. But, you know, until then, he's going to be camping me. So there's no chance for me in this engagement here. What I have to do is I'm going to load gold. And we're going to try to put shots into the... He looks to this side occasionally. So if he continues to do that... 
How did I get lit? There's got to be a tank here that spotted me, in my opinion. So, I just got lit. I think there's someone backing this guy up. Now, looking at their team, it's really hard for me to tell who's unspotted and who is. Like, who's been spotted. Wouldn't surprise me if their T30 is kind of here, and I don't want to take the risk that it is the T30. So, I'm not going to poke on this angle, because I think the T30 spotted me. Now, here, if you look at the map, this C100 can push me, and I wouldn't notice. So, I have to fall back here. Like, I wouldn't know until he got up to this corner. No one in my team's going to spot that, except maybe the 54 lightweight. We'll see what he does. Okay, he's going to spot the 100 and Okay, the 100 obviously not pushed up. Okay, there he is, and the SCRV is pushing it. And so, the 100 is going to be distracted. I'm going to go for the track and the damage, see if I can get some assists by doing this. You can see the SCRV put one into him, and there's the 54 one behind. Put a Sean to him, that's okay. So, bad trade right there. It would have been a bad trade, but the 54 one seems to be stocked. The 100 definitely loaded by now. See if we can finish him off with a shot. That's not going to high roll. Okay, now we get to push through. So here's where the spotting damage might come in handy. The thing is, they've got a WT right here. He's full HP, so if he, you know, <laughs> probably not going to get a lot of spotting damage on him. He's probably going to kill me if I try to do that. So what I want to do is I want to chase down the 5041 a bit. Chasing an autoloader in a city fight, man. Brilliant strat from Lemming Rush. <laughs> and we'll go for shots in the T30. Okay, if not the 54, if not the waffle. I want to get spotting damage out of this, so I'm going to be very aggressive. This guy's definitely loaded, puts a shot into me, that's fine. And that waffle can very easily YOLO me. Now the 263 is full, I have to watch out for that, at least Artie's covering me. And I'm going to try to sit here to stay safe. If this guy pokes, I'll get the kill, same with the 5041, so this is the ideal position. And from here we're going to push in very aggressively to try to get spotting damage on the 263 and maybe get damage on the Artie and shit. So put a shot towards the M53. We're up to 3k spotting, this is what we need, and here I'm going to have to be very... I can't be aggressive on the 263, because I want my HP to shoot at the other players later. So I'm going to spot the 263. I do. This is where you'd worry about the T92 hitting you. I don't think the T92 can. It's going to be famous last words. 195 spotting right there. Spot this guy again. He fires. We'll go for the track. Good. Now we can move in. So I'm going to move in. I expect this 140 to have come back. This 430 isn't moving, so he's probably turning around. Okay, the 140 is in a position that I can't really deal with. But because we should have support, I think it's actually okay. Okay, I wonder where that 430 is. Now, someone's probably going to take the hit from the 263. I'm going to push, expecting the 430U behind this guy, because you saw the 430U turning around. So, pushing very tentatively. There's the RD. Okay, where's that 430? He should be back by now. If the 430 was spotted, the only way the 430 is coming back is if he's behind me. So, I'm actually okay with this. Go for a shot on the clicker, click him instead, good, 430 is where, nowhere to be found, and they're all one shot. So I'm just going to see if I can reload, maybe get the kill here. We don't, we're just going to head straight back towards the object 430 and the 257. Okay, so there's no way that the 430 isn't aware that we're coming through here, so I'm just going to be very aggressive and see if I can get... Where the hell is he? Maybe to my left here, that'd be my guess, because the Conway wouldn't light him. Okay, <laughs> it's a bold strategy from the 430, getting himself killed like that. I'll put a shot on this guy's side. You're never going to pen the side of a 257, but you might get spotting damage on him. Okay, let's pen this. Dude, fuck. <laughs> that repair time. I'll let him shoot me. I don't really care. He bounces, which is nice. Okay, and that's 3,500 spotting. And 2,400 damage. That's pretty good. Hey, we thought we two marked this tank. No way. Okay, that's incredible. <laughs> So I've had a really kind of rough session. My average damage is way below, kind of 500 below what I've expected. But with that, we've actually two marked it. And it's taken me, oh my god, this has been the most frustrating to mark, 200 games to two mark this tank. Now, I think I got really unlucky with matchmaking. Like I'm not, you know, 55% win rate in this tank at 100 games is basically what I had. We've brought it up to 58%. Kind of hope to get it into the 62-ish realm, but there you go. Those are just goals. We're up to 85.12 percent on the mark of excellence and really i think this is going to be my next tank that i try to three mark so hope you stay tuned for that i really enjoyed this video it's kind of frustrating but very fun as well and uh, yeah i hope to see you around later guys Bye bye